What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another brand new installment of Renegades Reviews, exclusively here, as always, on the Casa D18 Studios channel. I, of course, am the Renegade J.J. Williams, and today I'm going to be discussing from 2017, Boone the Bounty Hunter, starring John Hennigan, Spencer Grammer, Osric Chow, Quentin Rampage Jackson, Dominique Swain, Jonathan Lipnicki, Richard Tyson, and Jane Park Smith, and featuring bit part cameos from Corbin Burnson, James Kyson, Erica Aleniak, and Kevin Sorbo. What's going on, everybody? Thank you for joining me here today for yet another brand new installment of Renegades Reviews. And I'm just going to get this out there right now. This film features a lot of John Hennigan's, John Morrison's parkour ability, heavily featured. Um, chases, fight scenes. Um, even some of the falls that he takes. Lots and lots and lots of the parkour abilities are shown off in this film. So if you always liked um, the footage that you'd see of John Morrison doing his parkour, this is definitely a film that you're going to want to watch. Our movie begins in Hollywood. And our lead character, Boone, is a bounty hunter chasing down Kevin Sorbo. Lots of Hercules jokes are being made by Boone's team, Denny, Jackson, and Kat. And during this chase scene, like I said, a lot of the parkour skills are displayed during this opening chase scene. Boone catches Sorbo, and he delivers his catchphrase. You just got booned, America. You're welcome. And like I said, Boone is a bounty hunter, with, but he has like a reality show. So they've been going after celebrities in order to try to get ratings, even C or D list celebrities, because they figure the name recognition will help boost the ratings in the TV show. After placing Sorbo in cuffs, Boone signs some autographs from some fans that are in the vicinity and saw the whole thing go down. And then we cut to a party in the Hollywood Hills. Ryan Davenport is hosting, and a woman, possibly his girlfriend, relationships never really established, she overdoses on cocaine. The next morning, Boone and his crew are in a production meeting, trying to figure out, you know, who they're going to go after for the season finale. Unfortunately, the show's ratings have dropped. Um, a lot of the viewers tend to believe that this is staged and it isn't all real. A reality show that's staged? Heaven forbid. So they're on the verge of being canceled. Boone calls an old friend who's with the DEA, Cage Bickle. This is Corbin Burnson's character. And Boone's trying to see if Cage has anything major that he can use for his season finale. Figures if he goes back to his roots a little bit and finds a really big case, it'll help save the show. Plus, Cage owns, owes Boone a favor. Back at Ryan's place we see him getting into a champagne-infused hot tub with a whore named Cheryl. And Ryan's father, Cole Davenport, shows up, along with Tess, who's kind of like his muscle, his bodyguard. Cole begins to scold Ryan because the cocaine that he had was his. Cole's been producing this product for 10 months, and Ryan's little theft is thrown him behind schedule. Plus, this girl now has traces of it in her blood, 
So once his product hits the streets, it can all be traced back to him. Tess kills Cheryl, and Cole takes Ryan with him to Mexico so that he can make sure that Ryan doesn't take any more, throwing him further behind in production. We're back at the production office the next day, and Boone begins to tell his team about Ryan Davenport. Ryan's trial for the death of the girl that OD'd was supposed to start that day, and Ryan has skipped town. So he's a bail jumper. Perfect target for Boone. Boone thinks this will be a great case for the season finale. Denny and Kat are down. They're totally in. But Jackson declines to go because he's got a wife. He's got a kid. You know, he's thinking of his family as opposed to the score. What if something happens in Mexico? And he tries to warn Boone, you know, be careful. They're not, they don't like Americans down there. They don't like American law down there. So when the trio arrive in Mexico, they meet a young boy named Miguel. And Miguel is a little bit of a fan, like he knows who Boone is. And Boone just completely puts his arrogance on display here, you know, making Miguel an honorary deputy bounty hunter, etc. Like he's going into full-blown ego mode. They then realize that Miguel is scared because the Davenports are in town. And the Davenports pretty much run this area of Mexico. So Miguel asks if the trio is there for Davenport. And it seems to put Miguel a bit at ease when they tell him yes, that that's why they're there, is to collect him. Him and Boone share a little fist bump, you know. Miguel is relieved. Boone and the crew go into a local bar, and another whore approaches Boone. She begins to make a pass at him, all the while Denny is setting up a camera. Because, you know, they are there to film a show, so they may as well have some footage of this encounter. Boone rejects the advances of the whore, and instead begins questioning her, asking if she knows where Davenport is. She refuses to answer. Again, she's a little bit concerned. The Davenports run this town, so the town's people are afraid of the Davenports because they're expendable to them at the end of the day. If they do something the Davenports don't like, they'll be taken care of. Some of the locals begin to surround Boone, and a fight breaks out. After dominating the fight... Using more of his parkour training, Boone discovers that Ryan is upstairs in that bar because it's also a brothel. Boone enters Ryan's room and finds him in bed with two more whores. Boone tells Ryan that he's there to collect him and that the bad guys usually always run. So in order to make for a good chase for television, he throws Ryan out the window safely onto a canopy above the bar door so that he then bounces onto the ground. Boone then jumps and flips out of the window, bouncing off the canopy, doing some more parkour flips, and lands on the ground below. Ryan gets up and begins to run, and Cat and Denny get into the van so they can begin to film the chase. Boone chases Ryan, but unfortunately for Cat and Denny, the federales, the Mexican police, pull up right at that moment and take Cat and Denny in. Cole shows up at the facility where the product is being made, and he sees a sick man. He refuses to treat the man because if he pays to treat the one, he's going to have to pay and treat them all when they're sick. And this... This um, warehouse is more like a sweatshop, if you think about it, because these people are there and they're working for them, but they really don't want to be there. They're there because this is how they're surviving. Boone catches Ryan, 
And then he begins to take Ryan to the border so that he can get him across Mexico back into the States, collect his bounty, help save the show. Problem is, border's 300 miles, and they have no car. So he throws Ryan into a porta potty and tips it over so that the door is down. That way he can't go anywhere. And Boone goes to try to find a vehicle so that he can take Ryan back. He ends up going to a barn and he encounters a couple of Davenport's goons. And a huge fight sequence breaks out in the barn. You know, you want to talk about a barn burner. This was one of the best fight scenes in the movie, in my personal opinion. Meanwhile, Denny and Kat, they sense that the cops are crooked. But wanting to preserve themselves and stay alive, they play nice with the cops and whatever they want them to do. After the fight in the barn, a couple of police show up to take Boone, but he narrowly escapes off the side of a cliff. Again, more of his parkour training here, helping him fall so that he doesn't kill himself. Meanwhile, at the jail, Denny is trying to track Boone with his computer. And when Cole and Tess show up, Cole tells Denny and Kat that Boone is dead and that his son Ryan is missing. Denny tricks Cole into thinking that Jackson has Ryan, and one of the offers believes that this could be true because the officer watches the show and knows that Jackson's a part of the team. And Jackson isn't there, so he believes that maybe Jackson does have Ryan. He doesn't know that Jackson didn't come along on this expedition. Well, Miguel is out riding his bike on the trail, and he just happens to stumble upon Boone, laid out after falling down that cliff. Miguel takes him home, and he has his dad, who is a doctor, patch him up. Miguel's mother does not approve of this whatsoever. You know, she's afraid that Davenport and her, his men may come after them for helping Boone. Now, after getting patched up and waking up, Boone tries to talk to Miguel a little bit and gives him some life advice. Very comical scene. Boone sounds like a PSA here. Very, very funny. About a minute, minute and a half shtick of John Hennigan as Boone reciting everything that you've ever heard in like PSAs, you know, don't do drugs, don't drink, always make sure you wear a jimmy, crazy, crazy stuff. And you can see Miguel trying to keep it together and not just fall out laughing during the scene. Now at the jail, Denny is able to cause a little bit of a disturbance, a distraction. And in doing so, he's able to get the keys to the jail cell. She tosses them to Kat, who frees herself, and then the two of them are able to take down the three police officers in the station and get away. And when Kat and Denny get back to the production van, they find Boone inside. Clearly, as we knew, now they know that Davenport was lying. Boone's not dead. Seriously injured? Yeah, okay, but not dead. And initially, they're happy to see him. At least until Boone starts going off about going back to get Davenport, finishing the episode, and all other kinds of business talk, instead of being concerned about his friends, you know, Denny snaps and he tells Boone, you know what, dude, we almost died today. And almost as soon as he finishes saying that, Denny gets shot. It's not a vital hit, but there is some gushing blood. Davenport's men do go to Miguel's home. They spot Miguel wearing Boone's bounty hunter bracelets so they can tell that Boone was there. And as a result, 
they terrorize the family a little bit. And back at the van, Cat and Boone begin arguing. Denny and Cat quit, and the trio split up. Boone returns to the bar and tries to question the whore again. She tells him to leave, and he barges in, thinking that Davenport's men are there, and he finds Miguel's father laid out on a table instead, a casualty of his association with them. And the townsfolk, they want Boone gone. You know, all that Boone and his crew being there is done is cause trouble. They begin to fight him again. Cat stitches Denny up, and the two begin to leave, but they pick up some commotion on Denny's computer. And they are able to see Boone at the bar fighting via the camera that Denny had placed there earlier in the movie. The bartender grabs his shotgun, and he racks it, and he's about to shoot Boone. And Boone tells him, look, I'm going to go after Cole Davenport because he has Miguel and what he's done to Miguel's family. And the bartender decides, you know what? I'm tired and living in fear of the Davenports. So the bartender says, I'm with you. And slowly but surely, some of the other townsfolk begin to come around and say that they're with him also. Cat and Denny show up at the bar after quitting, after saying they were done because they saw the fight and they saw that Boone was, you know, trying to do the right thing. They pledge their loyalty to, again to him too. And now they have an entire squad assembled ready to take down Davenport. Boone goes back to the porta potty where he left Ryan and he gets him. Boone's going to try to trade Ryan for Miguel, but Cole, Ryan's dad, doesn't want him. It's too much of a liability. So Boone and the townspeople decide they're going to storm the facility, and a shootout ensues. Boone enters the compound in an attempt to save Miguel. He takes out some of the henchmen, and then he encounters Tess. Tess ends up throwing a knife, and it lodges right into Boone's leg. He pulls the knife out, and he's about to start fighting Tess, and Cat shows up. So now we're going to have Cat versus Tess one-on-one. -on -one. Cole's able to escape to the heliport on the rooftop with Miguel. Ryan tries to go with him, and Cole just shuts the door in Ryan's face. Boone ends up running into the two men that he fought in the barn fight. And another two-on-one fight is, takes place. All the while, Cat and Tess are squaring off in another part of the building. Boone is starting to get beat, and he realizes that Jackson was right all along. And he's saying this, and Denny patches Jackson in to his earpiece. So now Jackson is able to coach Boone through the fight because he can see on his computer everything that's going on. Yeah, all the technology through Boone's camera, Cat's cameras, etc., earpieces. Jackson's able to coach him through his fight. And with Jackson's coaching, he takes out one of the two men. So now it's a one-on-one -on -one fair fight. And with a fair fight, Boone easily defeats the other guy as Cat defeats Tess. Denny gets attacked by the Mexican police officer from when him and Cat had been locked up, but Denny's able to defeat him. So each of them had a little bit of a fight scene. You know, Denny versus the police officer, Tess versus Cat, Boone versus the two goons from the barn fight. And when Denny defeats the police officer, the officer drops a grenade. Denny, using some quick thinking and calculation, 
straps the grenade to a drone that he has and flies the drone up to Cole Davenport's helicopter. The bomb, the grenade goes off, destroying the helicopter and Davenport. Boone is able to save Miguel, arrests Ryan, and Miguel gets to deliver the trademark line, you just got booned, as our movie fades to black. This one was... This was definitely the best of the John Morrison movies that I've seen so far. You know, Stormageddon, this one, and forgive me, I forget the other one here. Never Leave Alive. This was the best of the three, in my opinion. Never Leave Alive coming second and Stormageddon coming in last so far. I do believe we have one more John Morrison film that we're going to be taking a look at here. Yes, we're going to be looking at Sinbad. So we still have that coming up in a week to round out the John Morrison films. But I was, I was highly entertained by Boone the Bounty Hunter. Plus, you had all of the cameos and everything, like I said. This was just an all-around fun film. I'm going to give Boone the Bounty Hunter four and a half out of five stars. It was damn good. And some of you guys may think I'm crazy for giving it that high ranking. But like I said, I really, really enjoyed myself with this film. John Hennigan, John Morrison, whatever you want to call him. Best acting that he did so far, probably because it wasn't that far of a stretch from his real personality. You know, reality TV star, etc., the parkour. I think Boone is probably the closest to John Hennigan's real life persona as we've seen in a movie. Quentin Rampage Jackson, I'm not the biggest UFC fan in the world. There was a period of time when I did watch USC fights on a regular, and Rampage was always a favorite of mine. So seeing him in there with John Hennigan, I really enjoyed. Jonathan Lipnicki as Ryan Davenport. Holy crap, you know, when you think about the little boy and Jerry Maguire, and then you look at him in this, all grown up, and playing a douche to boot. Really, really well done by Jonathan Lipnicki. Four and a half out of five stars. I'm sticking to that. Make sure you guys get out there. Get those hashtags trending on social media. Hashtag Casa D18 Studios. Hashtag Renegades Reviews. Hashtag Renegade Returns. And, of course, the ever-popular... Hashtag shenanigans. We interrupt this episode of Renegades Reviews for an important announcement about... Merchandising. Merchandising? What's that? Merchandising. Come, I'll show you. Merchandising, merchandising, where the real money's made. Make sure you go over to teespring.com slash stores slash Jeff Meacham Network for all the t-shirts you see here from the West Coast professor, Jeff Meacham himself, you can get shirts for the Jeff Meacham Network, Talk Wrestling, as well as the red and gold Meachamania shirts. And while you're there, don't forget to get your shirts of the Casa D18 Studios Brotherhood, the Dads on Wrestling shirt, the Renegade J.J. Williams, Stat Boy Sports Bar, and the hashtag Stat Boy Approved shirt. Make sure you go over to teespring.com slash stores slash Jeff Meacham Network, and score your shirts today. Make sure you do what that commercial just told you. Get out there. Go to teespring.com slash stores slash Jeff Meacham Network. Get you your official Jeff Meacham Network logo t-shirt, your talk wrestling shirts, your Meachamania shirts, your official shirts of the Casa D18 Studios Brotherhood, your Renegade J.J. Williams shirt, 
Dad's not always on wrestling. Hashtag stat boy approved and so much more. Tomorrow, make sure you're back here on the Casa D18 Studios channel for another brand new episode of Renegades Reviews. As Movies with Wrestlers Month continues, and I tackle another offering from the hot rod, Rowdy Roddy Piper, Terminal Rush, starring him and Don the Dragon Wilson. Should be another interesting one to get into. Thank you all for joining me. Leave your thoughts on Boone the Bounty Hunter in the comment box below. I appreciate you guys watching. Thank you, and I will see you guys next time.